Hey guys, I'm Matt Pittman of Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today we're continuing our holiday playlist on YouTube with my absolute favorite holiday meal, Tomahawk Prime Rib. So prime rib is one of my absolute favorite things to make at the holidays. But growing up, right after I got out of college, you know, we'd go to Vegas and have the $5.99 prime rib buffet. There's just something special about it. It was a super special meal to me, no matter when I had it. Um, and there's lots of different types of prime rib. But first, let's go into talking about what is it? This doesn't have to be a prime grade of meat. You know, and I've seen a lot of people making videos out there of even Wagyu prime ribs, and that's fine if you want to do that, but I want to make something that's more practical, approachable, whatever you want to call it. I'm working with a 44 Farms uh, Tomahawk Rib Roast. Uh, 44 is out of Cameron, Texas. They're good buddies of mine. And as you can tell by the marbling on this right here, these guys have been working on these genetics for nearly 30 years. Absolute gorgeous cattle. Um, if this is choice, man, I'd hate to see what prime is, but this is gonna make an amazing product. And I know you can't taste it, but I'm telling you, this is what I buy for my family because it's affordable and it's not some crazy expensive piece of meat that 99% of the world aren't gonna cook. And that's just the truth. There's different types of these cuts as well. Let's talk about those. There's a boneless prime rib. You can have a bone-in prime rib, which is what this is, French to be tomahawk. Or you can have a standing rib roast, which is where you cut these bones out and you actually butcher twine them back on and cook it that way. I actually love cooking a standing rib roast because then you can season all sides of the roast. Um, we're not gonna do that today since these came tomahawked out of the package, which this is just French bones. You could do this yourself if you bought a bone in. You can trim this down with a boning knife, trim off this section, remove it, clean it up, and you've got something that really is just really pretty for presentation. Clearly that doesn't affect the taste, but it's gonna look amazing on a platter in the middle of a holiday meal. So that's why we're gonna do it today. And it's gonna be really simple, to be honest with you. So let's get into this. By the way, this is a great size for a couple families. Um, you know, every person is just gonna take a slice or two of this, so this will feed a couple families for sure. But I'm gonna take a boning knife and I'm gonna do minimal trim. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove any excess fat hanging off, so I'm gonna cut that off. And then I'm just gonna shave off this fat where it's a little too thick. See, that you, there's actually you don't need to do a whole lot there. And then back here, this is kind of worthless, but when we get back here, you wanna be careful. If you go real aggressive with the trim, it'll look kind of funny. You can also leave a lot of this, and then after the cook, you can easily remove it. So don't stress over the tail back here too, too much. So sharp boning knife, gonna do a little trim work here so that we can get a binder on this and apply our seasoning. Um, I want to remove this excess fat so I can get the, get the seasoning adhering uh, to the meat. And that'll help us build a beautiful bark and great flavor. So I'm just laying a boning knife flat and I'm just kind of shaving this, being real gentle. Be, be careful when you trim. You can always take more off, but you can't put it, put it back on. So go slow, take your time, do whatever you're comfortable with. And then we'll get our binder on and season it. We've got the rib roast trimmed down to my liking. You know, I wanna mention, don't sweat getting 100% of this fat off of here. If you do that, it's gonna be a weird shape. I got most of it out. Fat's flavor and moderation, so kinda of gotta go with what you like. Uh, I'm gonna use a binder today. I'm gonna to put Worcestershire sauce on it. It's my friend Bear Holman's W sauce, which is super, super tasty. Um, I met Bear working with Yeti. The dude is like an insane tarpon angler. Great guy, sent me some of this to try and I'm not gonna lie to you, I just thought there was only one Worcestershire sauce in the world. Now I know there's something way better. I'm just using this as a binder. You guys can use a binder or not. Um, you could use olive oil, um, you could use mustard, but this is going to complement the flavor profile of this beef. Just a little bit more on the back. This is just to help the rub adhere. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna do something a little different this time. I can simply season this with our holy cow, but I'm going to season with coarse black pepper. This is 16 mesh pepper, just to start. I'm taking 
something out of our brisket playbook here. So if you don't know this, pepper builds bark, okay? So if you put the black pepper on first, as my friend Jerby from Goldie says, you make sure the pepper sticks. It's not gonna bounce off any other seasoning. So I'm just putting a little bit of black pepper on here. Now I'm gonna go to my Meat Church Holy Cow. This is my beef rub. Again, use whatever rubs you want, but if you've made a prime rib before with our stuff, um, you may have used Holy Cow. So Holy Cow, salt, pepper, garlic, touch of paprika. I'm gonna go ahead and cover something now before any of you say it. Is he seasoning that with a whole lot of seasoning? Well, you might think so, but think about how you eat prime rib. You know, you're not eating this like a steak. You're taking, a, slices are like this, so your seasoning is only on the outside. You have very little seasoning with this big old piece of meat, right? So later on, you're gonna, you're gonna have this entire piece of meat with just seasoning on the outer edge of it. Lastly, I'm gonna finish it with our garlic and herb, which is a very delicate seasoning. So sometimes it takes a lot, but let me tell you, the garlic in here goes great on prime rib. You know, I've got a lot of prime rib recipes on meatchurch.com. I cook prime rib a lot of different ways, but they usually include my garlic and herb. I'm not gonna be mad if you sous vide one, you smoke one, you reverse sear it. You can do it however you want to. So it's a great segue into what are we gonna do today. We're gonna go fairly straightforward. We're gonna smoke this on our mill scale 94 gallon offset at 250 degrees with post oak. We're gonna be looking for 120 degrees in the dead middle of this roast. Now we're shooting for just under medium rare. Medium rare is 130 to 135. So if I go 120 in the middle and I pull it, what we'll be left with, this thing will carry over cook a few more degrees. The outer edges will be hotter. They'll be you know, cooked more. So if I'm serving this to my wife, she would get the outer edges because she likes hers more done than I do. And I save the middle for the guys that like things more, more rare. Um, and this will turn out amazing. Today, again, we're just gonna smoke it, but I'll tell you one other tip. If you wanna reverse sear this, then you could smoke it to about 115, get yourself a hot fire. Um, you could have plancha or even just over a grill grate and you could sear all these outer sides and the edges you know, for one minute, a section or so, and you could build an even bigger crust on there. But I'm gonna let this seasoning adhere. I'm gonna give it at least 15 minutes. It would be okay to do this the night before, by the way. You're doing this for a holiday, do everything right here the night before and let it adhere. But we're making a cooking video, so I'm just gonna let it sit 15, 20 minutes. I'm gonna get um, my pit where I want it to be, and then we're gonna put this in and get to cooking. Let's put this rib roast on. Now I'm gonna come down here all the way away from the firebox on my mill scale. Ooh, this is smoky. And we are gonna baste uh, periodically throughout the cook. Again, I'm cooking at 250 with post oak. But like I always say in an offset, if you run a little low, run a little hot, no big deal. All you gotta watch is the internal temperature of that. Make sure you don't go over 120. So we're gonna let this ride and we'll be back to baste here in a bit. All right, this prime rib has been on for about 45 minutes and I'm basting it with the same W sauce, the same Worcestershire sauce that I used as a binder, which I thought would be a super good compliment um, out here on the outside of this bark that we're building. It's gonna look great as well. You can tell this dark color is gonna have a great contrast when we cut this thing open. It's that beautiful pink. I'm gonna base this two, three times during the cook. Uh, and again, we're looking for 120 in the dead middle and then we're gonna pull it out. So I'll see y'all here in a little bit. The prime rib is gonna take a long time to cook, so bonus for you guys today. I always get asked about sides and my Brussels sprouts have become pretty famous around these parts. Anytime I post them, people wanna know how you make it, besides the people that say that you should just throw Brussels in the trash, which I definitely thought you should do when I was a kid. But these are so good, my wife asks for them every single week. We're starting out with five pieces of regular cut bacon that I'm just gonna put in a cast iron skillet. We're running our little Carolina cooker rig here, really inexpensive rig. And I'm just gonna cook down some bacon. I started out with just a little bit of olive oil, but this bacon, one of the beautiful parts about it is it's gonna kick out a lot of grease and that's what we're gonna cook everything in. We're just gonna brown this. We're not gonna cook it completely through. 
And once we've got a good amount of fat out, we're gonna drop in some red onion. Now that the bacon is about, I don't know, I call it halfway cooked or so, I'm gonna go in with just under, about a half of a red onion chopped. Mix that up and let's cook these down. They already smell super good. When the onion's cooking in bacon fat, you know that's gonna be good. All right, let's go to the next step. So what I do is I get a bag of Brussels sprouts and I cut the stalk off, the part, the part where it attaches the stalk. I cut that off and then I have them, that's it. And then I try to preserve all the leaves too because these get crispy and those are really good. So I basically have every bit of it in here. And let's mix that around. And as you do this, you may find that you need a little more oil than the bacon fat. And that's okay, that's why I've got a little olive oil. Once you got everything mixed, you can, you can kind of see depending how fatty your bacon was. So I'll normally put a little more olive oil in here. I'll stir that around, get everything nice and wet, and then I'm gonna put some seasoning in here. Let's do that. I'm gonna use our fajita seasoning. Fajita seasoning, de, de, de la fajita. It's absolutely our vegetable seasoning. It's salt, pepper, onion, garlic, hint of citrus. So people say it can be salty, it can be. It works perfect with this. We put it on all kinds of vegetables. Any vegetables you cook in cast iron are great with this fajita seasoning. And we're just gonna cook these until these Brussels look charred. It's gonna get into a preference thing, but we wanna tenderize them so they're nice and soft. And I like them to start getting a little black, a little char on them, and it's gonna be time to eat them. So that right there is what we're looking for. You're getting that nice char from the cast iron. Those are perfectly cooked. These are done and they smell amazing. I'm gonna turn this off, kill this fire. Um, we're gonna let these sit. We're gonna check in on the prime rib and hopefully it's about time to eat. All right guys, we've been cooking this rib roast for just under two and a half hours at 250. And you can see it's got beautiful color on it. Uh, we're going to use our thermopin here. We'll go right in the middle, try to do that where y'all can see it. There we go, just over 120. I'm satisfied with that. Let's pull it. Whew. Man, that's beautiful. Well, this is going to need to rest for a while. You can see it's got great color from basing it and that Worcestershire sauce. Um, we're going to let this sit for quite a while, and then we're going to get in here and carve it and see how we did. I just can't get over how good this looks. And you can tell from the bones here, this is what I would call a heavy smoke, which is why I wasn't searing it. Uh, it looks super, super good to me. I'm gonna pick this up, take a slicer, and just kind of come down here and separate it off the bones now, which is, you know, usually the least fun part. All right. There we go. So now, let's just go right down the middle. See how we did. Moment of truth, we all think. Whew, sheesh. Man. Coast to coast, medium rare. I'll tell you, because I tempt it, this thing creeps up and gets closer to 130 as it sits and rests for all that time. You can see it's crazy juicy. I mean, what an amazing contrast there um, with the darkness from basting it. Uh, it looks just, man, it looks killer. Enough talking. Let's get into this thing. I'm telling you, honest to God, I can smell the Worcestershire uh, from here, which I know is gonna be great. Cut this into a few little pieces here. I mean, it's crazy juicy. Look at that. This is what prime rib is about to me. And before I do anything to it, I'm just gonna go right in uh, on a bite of the spinalis with that crust on it. I'm gonna bring this in. 
this stuff added an element that is, it's pronounced and I love it. It's bold. You know, we seasoned this with coarse cracked pepper. So I got a big pepper bite. There's a lot of pepper in Holy Cow. So there's a lot of pepper on this thing in general. Hit it with that garlic and herb, basted it with this. Super, super good. I'm gonna bring in something here that I like to make. I have the recipe um, below in the description and on meatchurch.com for my horseradish cream, which is eight ounces of sour cream, four tablespoons of fresh um, horseradish, squeeze a lemon, like a tablespoon of holy cow. You can put some mayonnaise in it if you want. I do that from time to time, but that's something I like to get just a big old, big old swipe of. And hey, I'm the only one eating this tonight, so I can do what I want. I can double dip if I want to. God, that's it. It's gonna be hard to beat that. I'm not gonna lie, but huge point. You don't have to buy an expensive grade of meat to make a prime rib for your family. This was choice grade and dude, unbelievable. So thanks to 44 Farms for providing this for this video. And hey, I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this, check out the rest of the videos in our holiday playlist on YouTube. We've got more coming for you. We've even got more guest pitmaster videos coming just after that. So please like and subscribe our channel. This team's working hard for you to bring you weekly, straightforward, approachable how-to videos with no shtick, no sponsors, just straightforward education for you guys. So see y'all next time.